In his adolescence, he had burst, not in the oily, cysty, awkward eruptions of teendom, but with a depression and violence that was physically intolerable. He had wanted to die. He could also remember the soft brutality of his first period, the 11 days of cramping, bleeding, the hormonal tides making his uterus sob and rack, while the resultant endorphins left him warm and stupid. His joy at the tangible passage into adulthood was marred by its clear move towards womanhood. He had already recognized his slavery to this. In just over a week, he had been transformed from a cavalierly athletic acrobat to a soft, aching, immobilized thing. He felt sodden and mushy overnight. Over time, he came to know two things, that his menses brought insufferable pain, pain that made him shit and wretch and lie on the floor in paroxysms of crampage, and that his mother also suffered this pain, and that nearly every month she endured and she wretched. He found evidence of this in the toilet, where the lighter vomit stayed behind. That was when, instead of kinship, he understood her true superiority, that she did not allow even this to stand in the way of her ambition, nor did she ever share her suffering because she understood it to be a weakness, a flaw. He, inferior, imprisoned, could not share this special woman thing with her because it simply diminished him in her eyes. She had always regarded his stoicism, and he happily complied. He had, by 12, a connoisseur's appreciation for pain and endurance. Schooled by his parents, his drive to not only be one of the boys, but to, to be better than the boys, and the academy where he was regularly subjected to endurance rituals, holding up weights and standing on one leg and standing in the corner for eons for chewing <clears throat> gum. He was a pain savant. But the menstrual thing was a juggernaut. Pre-ibuprofen, pre-selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, the 70s were rather a time of embracing this blurry lens of femininity. The 70s were a time of moon rituals, Kate Millett and Gaia, birthing separatist farmers, uterine religiosity, and many, many terrible albums from women-owned recording studios. <laughs> He had a respect for parthenogenesis and ancient goddesses, but as potent and life-giving as they were, they would not intercede in the time-honored tradition of cramps. <laughs>